Hello everybody, today is March 17th, 2023, and this is my experiment investing $1 a day in 10 different cryptocurrencies and $1 a day in 55 different dividend stocks. Now you see this dotted white line right here for the day? This is how it's going up, and it went back down again, and you can see right here for the week, it's been going all sorts of different crazy, up and then down, and then you can look at the month, and you can see that it was going up and down. Right here is when it went really, really down because Silicon Valley Bank basically went bankrupt, and the Fed decided to bail them out. So everybody forward-looking think they would go ahead and put more money back in stocks. And then another bank, a major bank, started crashing. Not just a whole bunch of regular banks, but Credit Suisse also was starting to go bankrupt. One of the second largest lenders in Switzerland. Why does it affect us here in the U.S.? Well, it affects us because there's a lot of minor banks that also have their money in Credit Suisse. And it can affect and have a ripple effect on many other banks. So please be aware of what's going on. Now, why is the banks going under or why are they having such huge and horrible times? Well, because during COVID, go back to 2000, 2020, right? Beginning of COVID, everybody took all their assets, took all their money and cashed it in and put it into money. And then they started to push it around into other different locations. And then after everything started to settle down, they took all their money and started putting it back in the bank. So Credit Suisse for example, or other types of banks, Silicon Valley Bank, tons of money got flooded into the banks and huge amount of deposits going from, and don't quote me on this, do your own research. They put in, for example, from 60 billion to like 160 billion. Or the, the, the credits, tons of different money started going into the banks. And what banks do is when they get the money, they don't just sit there, right? They have a promise to give you paid back. So they started putting investments in other different assets, treasury bonds or or uh, other different things that the Fed said or the government said, well, we're going to stay at 0% interest, right? Because during COVID, 0% interest, uh, basically 0% interest was there. And so they planned, okay, for the next 10 years, I'm going to buy these treasury bonds because it's going to stay at 0% and I'm going to make 1.5% back. Well, what happened is the bank, uh, because all of a sudden people started pulling out their money and where are they putting their money? Well, this is just an assumption, but my assumption here is you can see all these other different cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin was down, right? Bitcoin was, if we come over here to the, the month, this is live data. I'm not telling you to buy or buy any assets. I'm not a financial advisor. I can't give you that advice. Make your own financial decisions. But you can see right here, it was way down March 10th. And then, right, the Fed decides to bail him out. So people start taking their money out of the bank. Right? And if you take money out of the bank, billions and billions out of the bank, the bank starts losing more and they start putting it in other places. And I believe that, or my assumptions is, a lot of the money is going to Bitcoin. And all of a sudden, the next announcement, right? Credit Suisse, oh, let's pull out more money from the bank, making the bank have even more. So it's a bank run. And let's put our assets, so our money, our cash somewhere else. And all of a sudden, Bitcoin starts jumping up. And the reason why my assumptions are this way is because Bitcoin is jumping up. But a lot of other coins are not or not as much like ethereum's not keeping up with bitcoin and neither are these other alt or junk coins like dogecoin or uh, ship inu is, is also not going up there are from other ones that are going up but where are they putting the money in bitcoin? and the same things happened back in 2020 if you think about it, bitcoin shot up a ton why because people were pulling the money out of the bank they put the first they put the money in safe assets they wanted cash to put it in the banks and then they pull it out and put it in, in other things. It, now, they may not be putting it in Bitcoin. They may be putting it in other things. They may be putting it in, in like how Robert Kiyosaki says to buy gold. Maybe they're putting it in gold. Maybe they're putting it in other places. But they're pulling it out of the banks, which is causing a lose-lose situation for the Fed. If the Fed decides to lower interest rates next week, it's going to cause inflation to shoot up. And then people are going to do who knows what, right? And if the Fed decides to raise interest rates the banks suffer more because more people pull more money out of the bank and then the banks start crashing more but if you think about it the u.s or at least the u.s or many countries or but the u.s for sure we are built around the bank system and if the banks are not there what happens and they start have bank runs and then and many other things and many other different layers happen around the banks and how they're going but you know, I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy any of these stocks. I'm just giving you my own personal opinion, I'm giving you my own personal experiment. You, your financial situation is very different than everybody else's. And it, you should definitely, if you want to think about investing or whatever your plan is, my suggestion to you 
because you're asking, well, what can I do? You know, I don't have a bank or anything. Have a plan. I don't know your financial situation. I can't tell you what to do. But what I am doing in my videos and what I am doing here is teaching you what, or at least not teaching you, but explaining and saying, this is what I am doing. And these are my backup plans because you have a plan and then have a backup plan and then have a backup plan to that plan and then have a backup plan to that other plan to make sure that whatever happens in your finances, you are safe for whatever is going to happen because we none of us can predict what the Fed's going to do. Only the Fed knows what they're going to do. And we have no idea what the world is going to do. We have no idea what Russia is going to do tomorrow. We have no idea what Ukraine or other people are going to do the next day. We only can see historically. And the thing about the stock market and what I'm doing is everything is forward looking. Everybody's looking or well, predicting or, or assuming what's going to happen in the future. Because if you look at his story on the stock market, cryptocurrencies, or whatever it is that you're looking at, everything fluctuates in its own different way. And right now, everybody's fear, fear, fear. Banks are crashing. Pull all your money out. Put your money somewhere else. Put it in bonds. Put it in treasury. Oh, but treasuries and bonds are inflation rates are skyrocketing. None of that matters because your financial situation is your own financial situation. And you have to figure out what you will do for yourself. And a lot of people will come and ask me, and if you're what this is one of the first videos you're coming into is why, why only one dollar a day? Why so little bit? Well, I firmly believe that if, that if you or anybody can save one dollar a day, right? Uh, say, for example, you're one of those people that have a thousand dollars in the bank. $300 a bank. Maybe you have no money in the bank. You live in paycheck to pay. Maybe you are extremely in debt in credit card debt today and you have you, you're not able to even save a penny. Right? Right? Right this second. Well, if you think about it through your day, start thinking of what can I cut that I don't need? Do I need my Netflix subscription? Do I need my Amazon subscription? Do I need my those newsletters or newspapers? Do I need that extra ounce of or maybe you're you're living in an apartment right or, or, or water how do I cut or save every single drop of water that comes out of my faucet when I'm brushing my teeth or I'm washing my hair or taking a shower every single penny matters in situations like this and you have to find a way to start saving and conserving so you have enough water you have enough food you have enough to survive in today's world and then once you have that plan and again, back to my point of $1 a day, you start saving up to where you can save at least minimum $1 a day. And then you can take that habit of $1. And if you can save $1, why not can you save $2? And if you can save $2, why can't you save 4 Why can't you save 8 Why can't you save 24 All the way up until you have enough save so that you can function. But you have to start cutting things out of your life that you may not necessarily fully need. And one of the lessons in my other videos, too, is they, they point out, we'll, we'll take this concept into effect. If you can't afford five of them, you shouldn't buy one of them. But my step further is I take it a step further and I say, if you can't buy 10 of them, you shouldn't even buy one of them. If you can't buy 10 phones, you shouldn't buy one. If you can't buy 10 tacos, you can't buy 10 hamburgers, you can't have 10 burritos, you shouldn't even be buying one of them right now. And, and you just take this concept and you build upon it and it will and can change your life. Now, your financial situation may be completely different. Maybe you can't even save $1, but scale it down. Save 10 cents a day. If you can't save 10 cents, save one penny a day. And if if you cannot save one penny a day, then you are in a very, very tough situation. And you should try to think outside the box. You can listen to some of my other videos of how to maybe in your own personal situation get out of that situation whatever it takes to do it whether you have to start making deliveries maybe you have to get a second job third job maybe you have to start doing a little bit extra maybe you have to do dropbox or do deliveries of food who knows what your situation is at the time but whatever you have to do find a way to start getting out of it and oh i'm so much in debt i am already working three jobs i'm already working four jobs i'm never sleeping well then take the other ideas and start cutting things out to make it so that you can survive but what about this huge inflation what about everything take one step at a time 
take one chunk at a time it, the world is going in its own direction its own place and you can only focus on one part at a time and i like to relate a lot of my vid my my videos to video games because i love video games and video games are the most important part for me because you focus on one section at a time and the one section i focus on is say for example you get up and you get to your first boss well it's the same thing wherever you are in your stage of life get to your first food what am i going to eat tomorrow what am i going to eat today and then okay i figured out my food now i got to figure out where am i going to sleep Okay, and I figured out my sleep. Now get to the next one. And then each time do a 1% or $1 increase with your life to improve it in some form or fashion. And that will how you change your life to become better. Uh, what if I want to do a big jump? I want to do the risk is up to you. If you have the ability to risk everything, then that is your choice. But you have to understand there's risk involved with whatever decision that you make or do. And the same thing applies to the stock market. Now in some of my other videos I also mentioned how all this money that I put in is not mine. And I also relate to the same thing like the bank. When you put money in the bank, it's not your money anymore, it's their money and they can choose what they want to do with it. And I've explained that in much more detail in those other videos of how how this all this 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 actually works. Well what if I want to put up all my money in my pocket I want to keep my money saved I, I don't I don't want to spend it out well right now with inflation being at six percent in the US right six percent above and the Fed is increasing interest rates higher your physical money is decreasing in value every single day as time goes by your same dollar that you had yesterday doesn't buy the same thing it buys today and as the time goes on, it just keeps going. And for a, a, a picture and a visual here, right? Back when my dad was a kid, and I know I had the wrong value before I reached it up, talked to my dad. He could buy hamburgers for 10 cents when he was a kid. And for me, I could buy 25 cents Big Macs from McDonald's. Well, why are you talking about McDonald's? McDonald's was the only place, fast food place, that I had around my vicinity where I lived on the uh, on the island of Oahu on the North Shore. Uh, McDonald's was the only fast food place. To get to the next fast food place, which was Burger King, was an hour and a half away drive going 25 miles per hour. Okay, 25 miles per hour in your car, the gas alone to get to one side of the island to go eat at a Burger King is tremendous. And then you have to think about another hour and a half just to get back home. It's a three hour round trip to go eat at another fast food place. So why do I relate to McDonald's? Because it was the only fast food place I could eat for cheap food that was fast anyways 25 cents Big Macs what is it today five or six dollars for a Big Mac that's not that long ago and it's only increasing as inflation increases and I'm just comparing it to food and how that works but you have to really think about it and realize where is the world going and how's it going and it's just the transition of money as it moves around now this is I'm not telling you to buy Bitcoin I'm not telling you to put your money in any of these cryptocurrencies I'm just giving you this is this is where I'm at and I have some money in it right and the money is going up because I can see what everyone's doing because with a dollar a day in you can see that all of them are just a dollar a day in but everything is acting differently because each one is its own company and does its own thing and has its own habit or its own financial decisions of what they're gonna do to decide and you can also see here because I've invested in dividend stocks that are banks banks are losing money and why are they losing money because people are pulling their money out because they're afraid they're scared the bank's going to crash the fdic insured is only two hundred fifty thousand. what's going to happen to bank? what if people bail them out well what well, what happens next is it going to be and we're only assuming here i'm only guessing we don't know what's going to happen because when somebody when something happens there's an interaction where the government decides to step in and bail them out but if they bail them out where is the cash being pulled from right the fdic so back in 2008 for the u.s alone they made it so that they had this emergency fund well they're pulling this emergency fund but 30 billion dollars they don't have enough to bail out just silicon valley bank so other banks are donating or putting money in as a loan or in instance but as every single bank decides to check each other and save each other, more hurt is possibly in the runs 
if more people start pulling out their money. And I honestly believe human behavior, people are going to be afraid and scared and they're going to pull their money out and they want to put it into something safe where there's bond. Are bonds safe? Are I bonds safe? They don't know. They, nobody knows what's going on. So everyone's trying to make their own financial decisions and putting money here and there. And people are thinking, well, you know, Bitcoin seems good. Maybe I can make a lot of money with Bitcoin. So they're putting money in Bitcoin. Or at least that's my assumption is what it looks like because Bitcoin is the only one that's skyrocketing right now to 26,000 and is that even a good idea I, I my own opinion if you look at it as it goes up and throughout the five-year period it goes up and it goes down and if the risk for your situation your financial situation is however you are financially prepared uh, me personally I'm not changing my plan I'm not I'm not gonna put more money into Bitcoin right now that's that would be uh, honestly I would feel that that would be a not very wise decision for my own financial situation i'm going to stick with my plan i have a long-term plan which is one dollar a day in 55 different dividend stocks and one dollar a day in 10 different cryptocurrencies and i'm just here and i'm watching and i'm seeing how it's going my plan may change and may be different as the time goes on but that's my plan now i also mentioned warren buffett and some of my other videos if you don't know who warren buffett is you need to google who warren buffett is if you're interested in investing in dividend stocks and one of the most famous warren buffett saying be greedy when others are fearful be fearful when others are greedy what does that mean it means that you should be fearful when everybody's putting all their money in right and all of a sudden you should be greedy when everybody's running away and scared because this is the time to look for opportunity for your own situation some people are like what or you think about it the biggest companies that made it big disney uh other different companies like netflix how did they all of a sudden become huge companies and big business even coca-cola and all those other different companies they became big right after a recession they created their business right after a recession if you have the finances or the ability to create a business a business that can last through a very highly likely recession that's happening not just for the US but for the entire world and you create a business and a business model that can last through the recession and then not just last but grow financially in some form or fashion in the next 10 to 20 years then you have a good business model or good business plan to grow because now is the opportunity to find those type of type of things that is the minority mindset I was like oh well what if I fail that's the risk that's involved in starting a business and and and, and, and you're like, oh you have no idea what you're talking about when I was a kid my mother owned a business for 21 years and, and that may not seem like anything to you but if you took the facts back then back in the 1990s 1980s you create a business only one only five businesses out of a hundred businesses ever succeeded ever made it past five years and then out of those five businesses out of five years only one of them ever succeeded out of 50 and she stayed in business for 21 years and I helped her do her taxes I helped her with her business it is no small task to create and have a successful business people forget about every single cost that's involved you have to pay your employees your employees can steal from you you have to pay for your electricity you have to pay for your land property your rent you have to pay for your water supply you if you're if you're doing food you have waste if you're if you're using whatever commodity or it is eventually there will be waste what if you can't sell your product everything plays into effect what if your shipment doesn't come in and you can't produce enough product to ship out to your people there's so much involved with creating a business and if you're not prepared for it and you don't have friends or a support group to help you build that business you won't make it to the next level and and yeah you're I'm, i know i'm talking about all these different aspects of well, what can i do think outside the box and start small oh i want to create this huge foundation. i want to be rich i want to be well it takes hard work it takes years of dedication it takes years of failure and i relate to video games again because video gamers they fail all the time and I have failed many times in many games and I accept those failures and I learn from those failures 
and I grow from them. And the same thing here is what I'm applying to here today. One dollar a day, uh, going and going, going and failed and failed. And and when I even got to here, some of my friends told me, "You better, you better pull out. Silicon Valley Bank is is crashing, and other banks are going to fall. There's going to be a bank run. You should pull all your money out." And then it, it went up a little bit and went down. I don't know what's going to happen. But if you're here and you're joining me in my journey, we're seeing what's happening here. This is just more of an experiment. And I'm not giving you a financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell any. I'm not telling you any of that. I, I, I'm literally just showing you this is my experiment. And this is what will happen as the first time I invested in my life was January 6, 2023. And we're seeing the results of what $1 a day can do for me in 55 different dividend stocks and $1 a day in 10 different cryptocurrencies. And we're seeing the results live. And I'm giving you just my own experiment my own two cents, where I've been, how I've, my own experiences, my own learning, and thank you for being here if you've been here this long. Uh, if you haven't already noticed, I'm not really editing in my videos. I'm not, I don't have a script written down. I, I, I was never good at history. I was never good at any of these things, but I'm learning as I go, and I'm sharing my experience, and I'm sharing my knowledge, and sharing how this is going, and Hopefully this is, has helped you in some way or some fashion. It's entertainment, lightening your burden, giving you ideas to do your own things, and your own research, and your own backup plan to your backup plan to your other backup plan. Have those plans in place because what is coming this year and the next years to follow is very likely a lot of hurt and a lot of pain for a lot of people because honestly, in my opinion, 50% of Americans or more, probably much, much more, are in the situation that is so dire that they cannot even even afford the gas in their car. And, or they can't even afford rent. They can't even afford a house. They're living homelessly. And this is painful for all those people. And my heart goes out to you. And I, I, I really, I understand. I've been in those situations. I've been there. I, I know that it's not easy, but you got to think outside the box and you got to think of your own situation and figure out how do I get out of the situation that I'm in and then how do I make it to the next step? One dollar a day, apply that concept in some form or fashion to your life, one something, one percent, improve one percent every day and become better. Thank you for being here. If you like this content, please feel free to leave me a comment. Don't forget to smash the like button. Feel free to subscribe. I'll be posting at least a minimum every Monday, every Friday. Thank you for being here. You all have a wonderful and safe rest of your day.